Hi there, folks. Andrew here at ChatFuel. Today, I am super, super excited to be talking to Jürgen uh, from a photo booth company in Germany. He has recently entered into our ChatFuel e-commerce competition, which ends December 18th. You can submit your bot by then. So I just wanted to interview him and talk to him because I don't know much other than the results he's been able to achieve using ChatFuel for e-commerce and they've blown me away. So I wanted to get him on this call. And so Jürgen, thanks for uh, joining me today. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks. Excellent. Excellent. So we'll dive right in first, just giving some context more as to who you are, and then we'll dive into the bot specific stuff. So <clears throat> just start by telling me what got you into the uh, photo booth industry and kind of how that backstory of it came about. Okay. Okay. So 12 years ago, no, 14 years ago, I started my photographic career as a wedding photographer. And the time I started, I thought, okay, I want to do it different than all the other guys around me. So I looked uh, over to Asia and I looked to uh, United States and uh, just figured out what do they do. And this was the time when photo booths started uh, on the other end of the world. And it was not as comfortable as it is today. So it was just a tripod with a monitor on it and a camera and a flash and the, the printer was on the bottom and the laptop was on top of the printer. So it was very, um, let's say, it was working. It was working, but it was not really good looking. So I decided and asked a friend of mine who is in the metal industry uh, to build me a photo booth. And he did. And the, the version I got, um, I'm sure it would have survived World War III because it was so heavy. Um, so from a mechanic point of view, it was excellent, but it was so heavy. And so I decided, okay, I need to have a, a lighter version. And I started to build it on my own. This was in the year 2013. And then I started to build the first photo booth for me. And if you are a wedding photographer, you know other wedding photographers, it, as it always is. And they saw it and they said, okay, hey, Jürgen, I want one of those. And they know somebody else who said, I want one too. Uh, so basically from 2013 till today, I built about you know, 500 of those photo booth systems and sold them all over Europe. How I connected to uh, ChatFuel to the bot was, uh, with the photo booths, I also sell event printers. And those event printers need supply material that you cannot go uh, to the next grocery store and buy it there. So it's not, not just paper and ink, uh, but it's some special supply material. And there are a couple of places where you can get it. Um, but of course, my clients, those who bought the photo booths from me, they also ordered their supply material. And one day when I heard about chatbots and I started to think, how could a chatbot um, support me in my business? Because these, these orders of supply material always took a long time. So it was like 10 to 15 minutes to just to get all the information I need and to write the invoice and send it over to the distributor who does dropshipping for me and all the stuff. So it was yeah, 10, 15, sometimes 20 minutes. And also for the clients, it was not the perfect way because if I was not available, if I'm on a holiday or a, an event or something, they could not order. Sure, they could send, have, have sent an email, but um, it would not be shipped if I am not here. And since 95% of my clients are on Facebook, uh, I decided, okay, I will give it a try and... I will invest some money to have a chatbot built. So um, to be honest, I tried Fiverr first. Um, I tried to hire someone cheap uh, who could do a chatbot. And well, if you buy cheap, you get cheap. Um, <laughs> I've unfortunately uh, yeah. suffered that experience myself. Uh, yes, I guess most of us did. And so I decided, okay, I will, uh, I set myself a time limit. I will invest three days from Friday morning till Sunday evening. If I can get it done in this time, I will continue. If not, I, I will just check it as a, 
a good experience, but um, so it's not for me. Okay, and so, so you succeeded in that. Yeah, I did. I did indeed. Uh, so I started on Friday morning, and I said, okay, I won't do the same mistake again by just starting to 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 drag and drop some stuff together. But I I laid out a plan. So I put these posted. Uh, things you can put on the wall and my entire room was at the end was filled okay i want to order do i want to reorder the same as last time no i want to do a new order what printer do i have what uh, size of material do i want how many do i want um, where am i located in germany or outside in the european union or outside in a third uh, country uh, because of the tax and the shipping calculation and all the stuff and at the end when i thought okay looks good i can start then i started to build the bot in chat fuel and i guess i made the same experience than everybody else uh, i started to do it and i, I guess after the after the third uh, section i realized Okay, I missed I missed this pass and I missed that pass and I missed what happens if this? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's and a mind game. Yeah, it's, it it really is. It really is. And doing a really really good plan. If I can give the viewers one advice, do a really 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 good plan before you start to to set up. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I would agree with that in terms of best practices, at least when I build bots, I would say 90% of the work is really that planning stage yes. where you establish what objective you want to accomplish in this case, helping people exactly. order supplies for their printers and go from there. So tell me a little bit more, uh, and it can just be brief, but so just to confirm then the goal of your bot is to not necessarily have people order the photo booth itself from you, but just the supplies and guiding them through that process that typically exactly. used to happen over the phone or through email. Exactly. That's it. Got it. And so tell me a little bit more about the the building process of it. Obviously, you said you were able to accomplish it in just a couple of days, which is amazing to hear. And I guess maybe go a little bit more in depth into that planning phase. Obviously, you said you had the post-it notes that you use, which is amazing. Uh, typically, when I work, uh, I use like a, a visual builder online because at least for me, I'm a very visual learner and that helps. Yes. So the to hear that you do that you know, in the real world physically with these post-it notes is neat. So tell me more about like what, what the ultimate goal or metrics, metric of success is for uh, the bot that you built then. The ultimate goal was to enable my clients to order supply materials without my physical presence. So um, an example, if you order the, first, the very first time with my bot, you have to enter all the information like shipping address and billing address and what printer, what type, how many, and all the stuff. And all this information is saved. So if the same client, um, he will get notified after 30 days. At the end of the process, I ask, hey, uh, do you mind if I notify you in 30 days um, just to check if you still have enough uh, in stock? And the next time he starts the bot, uh, the bot asks him, do you just want to reorder the same stuff as last time? Um, and if he says yes, it's, a cup, it, it's two clicks to reorder. And what I do is the first, the first time someone orders, I have to approve it. Uh, so I have to start a drop shipping. Um, and once this is fine and the client paid in time, I will just add the, the client number to the chatbot. And if the chatbot sees, oh, this guy has already has a, um, a client number, um, then I will get an information, hey, he ordered again. But also the, the company who does the drop shipping before me, they will instantly get a notification, hey, you can deliver four boxes of this material to this address. And the invoice goes to me. So all I have to do is to create the invoice um, for the client. So if I'm two weeks on holiday or on vacation, they can still order. They will still get their materials and supplies. And when I come back home, I can write the invoices. 
That's amazing to hear. And that's one of the kind of missions we have here at Chatfield yeah. is to save people time, like exactly what you yeah. said. Instead of worrying about all this stuff, you can be on vacation and spending time with your family, which is amazing and, and great that's to hear. Uh, so I'm also interested to learn more about the specific plugins and integrations you're using here. Obviously, you mentioned that you're interfacing with your dropshipper uh, through this process. And so what, what integrations or plugins are you using in Chatfield? You know, is it the email plugin, APIs, or what, okay. what tools make all of this possible? Okay. So what I do is I started with a simple email uh, plugin. Uh, so I send an email to me, I send the email to the dropshipping company with different uh, texts and um, different variables. So it was super easy. And after time, I modified the, uh, the, the bot because some of the emails went to the spam folder and I said, okay, I have to make sure that the dropshipping company knows when a new order arrived. So I added uh, Twilio, Twilio uh, this SMS company, and so every time um, an email goes to the dropshipping company, uh, one of those guys there will receive an SMS, uh, a short message, um, which does say, hey, uh, there's a new order from uh, this or this person. Um, please make sure you got the email. And yeah, from time to time I get a call. They say, hey, uh, we are not sure we don't have this email. And, yeah, but it's basically, it's very, very stable. And what I also added is if someone orders the first time, I have some kind of a, a benefit, a gift for him. So I added an integration to wowing.io. Um, wowing is a company where you, you get a name and an email address into the wowing section. Uh, then I will get an information on my phone and I just can with one tap, I say, hey, uh, I record a video, say, hey, I just uh, got a message um, that you ordered the first time through the bot. I hope everything was fine. Um, so here is some gift for you. And below there is a URL where he can get some, some freebie from me. And I, I will send out this email. It's personalized, um, the video. And right now I'm in the process to send this email with the video from Boeing, not to the email, but directly to the messenger. Um, it's already working. I just have to implement it. So yeah. then part of the ordering process in the bot is for them to provide their email. So obviously long-term you want to deliver that video through the bot, but in the meantime, you're collecting yeah. that email in the bot and then sending that video. Exactly. Uh, Got it. Got it. Uh, one other important thing that I wanted to touch on before we get to the results that you've been able to achieve, which are mind blowing to me, is you mentioned after people order, you currently follow up with them 30 days later to see if they have enough supplies still in stock for the photo booths. Um, so my question is, how do you how do you plan on adapting as Messenger changes their policies? Because as we know, currently you can send follow up messages within that twenty four hour window. Beyond that, you have to use these other case specific tags or use sponsored messages. So I'm cur I'm wondering how you're currently facilitating that process, and then if you've thought about how you'll adapt that as well as these policies change over time. Yeah. Um Luckily enough, at the moment, it's still working <clears throat> with the 30-day messages. Um, but when this will change, I guess I have to go to the sponsored message um, because this 30-day reminder, it's, it's really valuable because uh, the guys, they don't think about, hey, uh, do I have enough uh, supply for the next 10 or 20 events or the next events in the next 30 days? So they just, okay, they get a reminder from me and say, okay, I have eight boxes left. I have 20 events, so I need 12 more boxes. And they just order um, right at this point with, with one click. Um, and I have to, if they change it for me, I have to find a way to, to keep this up. Um, and if it's not possible to do it in the messenger, maybe I will use Twilio uh, to send an SMS then, or yeah, find some, some other way. So as promised, kind of talking more about the results, I suppose maybe we should have really reeled people in up front with the <laughs> results. But uh, tell me, I have two questions about the results. First off, just tell me, you know, how 
how much revenue sales you've been able to generate and maybe how that compares to this process before you did it on messenger. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Um, I, I just checked it uh, before our call and it's over 90,000 in sales right now. Um, 90,000 euros. Um, mm -hmm. And which is yeah quite amazing because it's almost hands-free. So I, I don't have to do a lot. I, I have to write the invoice. Okay. Um, I could do this all day <laughs> sending out invoices. Yeah, that's probably um, the best part have... of the process. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I asked the company who, uh, where my invoice program is from, but they don't have an API yet, but they think about maybe they can add something. Uh, that would be really cool if the invoice goes out automatically too. Um, so, and what I realized is that before I had this chatbot on Facebook, um, the people always, when they need new material, new supplies, they always check it out, okay, how is the price at this vendor? How is the price here? How is the price there? Um, but I make it so easy for some just to reorder. So it doesn't really matter if the box is two euros more, more or less. Um, it's, yeah, they just don't care. Uh, they click and they know in within 24 hours, uh, US, UPS will, uh, or DHL will deliver the stuff. So it's just working. And so the, the quality of service and the ease of service um, is more important than the to be the cheapest. I, I couldn't agree with, more with that. It, a little personal story is that just last week I was working on getting some Christmas gifts for my family and I went to this one vendor to get a gift card and I literally had to call them over the phone to order, give them my credit card number, name, address and everything. Yeah. And I'm like, did we just like teleport back in time to the 1990s where there's like DSL and all that and like dial up because it just felt so antiquated. And so, yes, to your point, yeah. I totally agree that um, yeah. although I didn't in that case, um, customer support and, and speed and efficiency play such a big role in, in who you do business with. Um, my other question about the results that you mentioned which again, absolutely incredible, big hats off to you for that, um, is in the screenshot that you submitted for our contest, you showed uh, in the people tab, the like monetary order value next to each of those users, yes. those, those customers. Yes. So tell me uh, how on the back end that, that process works. Is that again, through an API or is it all manually with attributes? Or again, how oh, do you like assign that value to each customer? That's all inside chat fuel. Um, I have defined a user variable called user value. And every time the user submits an order, I just add the, the order value to this uh, variable. So it's, it's very, it's simple math. Uh, so it will count up, count up, count up. Um, so every time the user orders something new, um, there's a new uh, user value for him. And yeah, and I think I think a lot of people underestimate the power of that. Obviously, it's just data that's useful for yourself, but yeah. with the people tab, you can create things like custom and lookalike audiences for when yeah. you're creating sponsored messages or just newsfeed ads in general to really hone in on your most valuable customers, which is great. So I think that pretty much covers it. One last question that I have for you, and then if you have anything else to add, feel free, is best practices. I know earlier you mentioned that one of the best pieces of advice you can give is to plan, plan, plan before diving in and building the bot. Um, but curious to know if you have any other words of wisdom in your experience of building a, a super effective bot. Okay. Always take a look from the few, from, from the few of your clients. Um, it, don't build a bot to serve you as a vendor, but build a bot to serve your clients. Because um, that, that's one thing I learned from Amazon, from um, and they always, it's, it's really, it's, it's client focused. And I know I could have made this bot way easier if I just missed out all the, the shipping costs and the taxes. I just say, okay, one uh, piece of this supply material, it's 80 euros and maybe wet will apply and maybe shipping costs will apply. 
but that's not what a user wants. The user wants, when he clicks purchase, he wants to know everything. Um, how much is it? When will I get it? Uh, how much is the shipping cost? Um, when will it free shipping? When will it be free shipping? Um, so I added all this stuff and I, I guess uh, this shipping part alone, at least is a, it's one third of the entire bot is this uh, shipping stuff. Um, so always take a look to your bot from the view of your client who, who will use it. And maybe ask a couple of friends uh, to test it and really value their input. Um, ask them to be very, very critical with the bot. If there is anything they they don't know what to do. If there is a step in your bot where they are not sure what to do, then you have to do better. Um, and building a bot is, is one thing, um, but most of the time you are rebuilding the bot just to make it better, to tweak it a little here, a little there. <clears throat> um, so one more thing, I will uh, use an API from DHL in the next version where the user will get a tracking code. So once I get a tracking code from the dropshipping company, um, I use Zapier or Integromat just to catch this email, figure out for, to whom this, um, uh, this tracking code belongs to, and then send out a message, hey, here's your tracking code for your order. So always keep the client well informed um, yeah, and make it easy for him to order. It, it certainly is an iterative process, building a bot or really any user centric application. So I couldn't agree more. And I believe you mentioned Amazon, but I believe Steve Jobs uh, also has a quote, something along the lines of uh, simplicity is the highest form of sophistication, obviously, meaning that it might be more work on the back end for you to create this, but obviously that's going to benefit the end user, the customer in the long term. And as you said, this can be a, a major contributor as to whether they choose to do business with you or someone else who can make that process of ordering and reordering even simpler. So again, I, I think that covers it. Uh, anything else that I missed that you feel is worth adding? Keep on with your good work, guys, from uh, ChatFuel. Um, it, it's amazing. Uh, I, had a, I had some support calls the, over the last days because my bot was not working for some hours. Uh, but this was a Facebook thing, not uh, ChatFuel, just for the listeners. <laughs> and um, so, yeah. Just keep your good work up. It's it's a pleasure. It's fun to work uh, with it because it's you do something and you can test it. You do it, you can test it. You do it, uh, then you tweak it and you can test it again. And that's really it's you. You don't have to have um, developer skills to do it. Um, you can do a lot of stuff uh, just with with a logical mind. And if you really need a developer. Well, then go to the ChatFuel community, and I'm pretty sure you will find someone there who can uh, write a web service for you, who does something special, or, um, yeah, you can do almost everything. So the, the sky or your brain is the limit. Um, just go that. and get started. I love that. Um, and yeah, that's that's what drew me to Chatfuel too, even before I was working for Chatfuel. I'd just use it because I wasn't a developer and I'm still not. And I guess I'll ask that as our closing question. Uh, do you have any developer skills or are you just no. uh, amazing? That's, I studied that's... economics with tax law as a main skill. So no, no developer skills at all. <laughs> <laughs> so if you study tax law, then that's why you're so good at calculating uh, taxes and shipping maybe. and all that. <laughs> yeah, maybe, um, yeah. But anyway, uh, Jürgen, thank you so much again for joining me today. Uh, to everybody out there watching, thank you for watching and participating. Um, in closing, I will say that, again, uh, Jürgen entered into our e-commerce competition that closes on December 18th. So wherever you're watching this video, we'll have some sort of information in the description or the post itself explaining how you can enter for yourself. We have lots of prizes at stake, a MacBook Air, iPhone 11, and some others as well. So be on the lookout for that. Obviously you have a, a tough act to follow, tough competition here, but uh, we accept all entries and uh, look forward to see how you use ChatFuel for e-commerce. So again, Jürgen, thank you so much and uh, keep doing great work and happy botting.